Hey, it's Brett, Useful Aircraft. Told you all about the simple plank. I said I'd make the plans available, and I said I'd make them available through STL. Well, today's your lucky day. They're going out. Let me introduce you to what we have. Basically, it's, a, uh, it's an STL file you'll find on my website, usefulaircraft.com forward slash shop. And it's a zip file that, when unzipped, contains nine folders. The folder contents, read my handy notes, you got 11 airframe components, one battery component, one set of control horns, eight DJI FPV components, two foam board operating tools, three landing gear components, motor mount, the F405 uh, flight controller mount that I use, and a vent latch. Let me show you what those items are. To start off with the airframe components, this is my fuselage jig. It's broken into three pieces. Here I have it uh, taped together, and this is the way that I actually go ahead and use it. It's uh, no piece that is involved in any of this is larger than uh, 200 by 200 millimeters. So most conventional 3D printers should have no issues uh, in printing them. The uh, wing has its own jig. This is the wing jig. If you notice, there's marks on there telling you what to do with every component. For example, this here, those are the fold lines. These are your center of gravity marks. As when this portion of the wing is folded over, these marks will be on the underside of the wing, and that'll be where you want your center of gravity when you fly it. Conversely, these marks here are labeled wing align. The wing alignment marks will be on the top of the wing. These marks here, at the tra trailing edge of the fuselage, the uh, cutout in between the elebons allows you to align the fuselage with the wing. At the leading edge, however, it's much more difficult. These two marks, when placed directly on top of the foam board fuselage, will ensure that your wing is square to your fuselage as built. The elebons, those are delineated here. Flight control horn placement, there and there. And again, fold lines on the outboard portion of the elevons. How I recommend using this tool on a sheet of foam board, my wingspan that I've cut to is 550 millimeters. The overall fuselage length, also 550 millimeters. You can play with this. Place this tool at the edge of your foam board and go ahead and trace or cut out at the very center your wing. Take it to the end, mark your elevons and your fold lines and same thing on the opposite wing tip. Then, using a square or a ruler, trace those lines and make your fold marks. Other fuselage uh, components, that's the aft motor closeout. Some folks say that they don't like tracing small parts with, a, uh, with an X-Acto blade, and I get that. What I often do for components like this is just trace it with a pencil, and then I'll cut that out using an X-Acto blade where I can be very exacting, very precise. This is the smallest piece on the aircraft. Next, we have our tail closeout, which includes the rudder mounting. You can see that there. This is the forward avionics hatch, where the DJI camera system and the vent hatch will mount. This is your avionics tray. Again, those two dashed lines are fold lines. I've run a Sharpie down, marking on an actual 3D print these are recessed, so you'll be able to see it. I ran a Sharpie down these lines just so you could see it better on the video as uh, the white recesses otherwise don't stand out on camera. So, and then our nose, this is where the forward hatch uh, engages, um, and that's the nose closeout. Those are the 11 airframe components. Again, they are all designed to print in a, any 3D printer with a 200 by 200 millimeter print bed, um, so it should be readily accessible. 90% of printers have that. Moving forward, this is our battery part, and all this is is a, uh, it's a forward stop, or an aft stop, depending on where you want to place it in the airframe, to stop your battery from sliding. It depends on what battery you're using, if you're using a smaller LiPo pack, uh, or if you're choosing to use a, a larger LiPo, or even a lithium ion pack. Um, keeping that center of gravity placed accurately on the center of gravity marks, which again, when you fold the wing and place it on the airframe, it'll show you right where the center of gravity is supposed to be, is critical. This airplane, it's a plank. It is 
critical that both the, uh, the center of gravity are exact on and that the motor angle of instance are set on. We'll get to that here in a minute. These are your flight control horns. That's the way they come off the printer. They're paired up. That's all that you need. Moving into the DJI camera assembly, this shows a mock-up antenna in place, the carrier, and then a mock-up camera included in the camera mount. As you can see, this slides fore and aft here. These nuts are simply glued in place, and I just use those as ballast to simulate the mass of a DJI camera system. When you first build this airframe, don't put your $200 DJI camera system in it and take it out and throw it. It's likely that you'll have a bad time. You build something like this, you toss it in the air a couple of times, you get comfortable and know exactly how it flies, maybe even do your first flight with a flight controller like this, and then you put your camera in it. The airplane has very predictable flight characteristics, but you need to get used to them. So I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to use a camera analog before you throw your expensive camera system in there. This is the uh, camera carrier tray. It mounts on the uh, upper surface of your avionics hatch. It shows this. This guy just glues right in place like that. This allows the camera system then to slide in. And then once it's in place, it's secured with this pin. As shown there. That pin prevents, and obviously I didn't glue this so I can pull it out, but it prevents the camera assembly from sliding out of the carrier tray. Say you're done with the airplane. You want to rebuild it, you want to do something different. A little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol and the hot glue will do, let go. You can pull everything apart and reuse it. Moving on, I mentioned the landing gear. This is an experimental gear system that I've been playing with for landing on concrete and landing on asphalt. It's not great if you're landing on grass. Landing on grass, honestly, at most, I might put a, some packing tape on the underside of the fuselage. The airplane lands just fine landing on its belly. This, however, will keep the nose of the airplane, and more importantly, that camera system, a little further elevated from the ground when you're landing on the street. Uh, make sure you place this well forward to your center of gravity. The gear system is designed to have some give and some spread. This is originally designed as a tail skid, but you can also use it as uh, like a main body gear. You know, if you're flying a particularly heavy battery and you're concerned that the gear spread with just the two gear assemblies will be too great, you can simply insert the uh, tail skid up in the forward fuselage as well, and that will provide an auxiliary resistive force to any compressive load on touchdown. Make sure that you print these gear parts with 100% infill. These, otherwise, if you print them at 15%, they're just going to shatter when they hit the ground. They're printed laying on their side, and so they're made of continuous elements. And in doing so, that maximizes their strength in the uh, direction they're used. Um, again, this is an experimental system. I, uh, I've had lots of luck with this uh, style designs in other aircraft, uh, but I'm just starting to play with it on this. I thought I would include that for you as well. I talked about uh, foam board tools. I have found a cardboard perforator, um, and I believe it was on Maker World, and uh, the cardboard perforator, I'll leave a link to it. This is cardboard perforator I did not design, and I am not going to revisit this design because honestly, I think that this is brilliant. Um, if you choose to use this, you can find it on Maker World. I believe there's also one on Thinker Thingiverse. Um, and that cardboard perforator was made by a gentleman by the name of Matty DS. So uh, I'll include a link to that below. Otherwise, before I even discovered that device, I was using this. This is my foam board tool. These are simply fender washers and a couple of random bolts that I had laying around. They plug into either end. Here you can see I have a stack of fender washers that gives me about a five millimeter uh, crush width. And then on this side, I just have a single fender washer that goes in there. The size of these are not important. What's important is that you can use this in order to run along and create bends. I will say, I think my tool is inferior to the cardboard perforator. This, I love it. 
single piece print in place Matty DS on uh, on Maker World. Also included, I forgot to mention the motor mount. So a little change in the design brought the uh, the sides up a little bit further, but that's the motor mount. This does include it's just shy of three degrees uh, motor incidence, which will help to set your thrust angle correctly. The top hatch vent latch. This is that. And again, that'll slide into this piece here. This is not representative as this is a three millimeter thick 3D print versus foam board, but this will be your latch closeout that when it is slid aft, this will rest under the leading edge of the wing. So you can just see how it'll stick out just like that. Last but not least, if you choose to go down the road, the Speedy B uh, F405 uh, mini flight controller is an amazing flight controller. That's it. This is the mount that I built for it and it includes wiring guides. Um, you can take a look. I really like it. It keeps things somewhat neat and organized. Um, it has wire strain relief, uh, a ton of little posts that raise up that allow you to secure the flight control board where you want it and then run your wires. The great thing about that, you literally press those wires into place, cut them to length, tin them, solder them, uh, tin the pads and solder them in position and everything is just born there and sits perfectly happy and ready to go. So uh, I think that's a better way to put together a flight controller. I've included that. So that's basically it. What I'll show you, I'll run over the laser. I'll show you the uh, the negative um, foam board sheet after I extract it from the laser and I'll show the fit of these uh, 3D printed parts so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. And in my next video, we'll go ahead and build another one of these airplanes, uh, give you an idea how to put it together. All right, here we are, we're at the laser now. I wanted to show you the 3D printed templates in the last cut sheet that I used to produce an airplane. So again, you can see here's your wing jig showing where your cut lines, your fold lines. There's a center mark there, your left and right half of the leading edge. You can see the wing alignment points and again above the fold line the center of gravity marks. Similarly on the fuselage you can see as it's inlaid there on the uh, cut sheet you can see the black dashed fold lines showing you where you fold the two sidewall fuselage uh, portions up and at the tail where you taper the tail into the motor mount. Here's your uh, your rudder you can see your avionics shelf your forward FPV hatch your tail closeout and uh, your closeout at the nose for the uh, FPV camera mount. So again, all of that just happens to line up perfectly with the uh, last foam board uh, aircraft that I cut. So I think you'll find this, uh, these templates very useful in producing your own airplanes. I really love this airplane. It is loads of fun to fly, both FPV and line of sight. It's small, it keeps in the front seat of my car. It is not a sub 250 build. That was not the intent of this. But as an FPV platform, and especially when you integrate a flight controller and whatnot, um, and the DJI camera system, it's just a really enjoyable airplane to get out and fly. It is a plank. It has plank style flight characteristics, meaning that obviously it's gonna go exactly where you point it. It has pitch power coupling, and it does have a nose up pitch tendency on power application, but that is intentional. Planks have a tendency to be underperforming when it comes to a raw pitch input without any power application. And the reason being is the arm on the elevator acting elevon is shorter than it would be in a conventional tailed airplane. So it produces less of a pitching moment. But if you add throttle while at the same time you pull the nose back, you stab both of those at the same time, you'll have no problem. The airplane will pitch up and climb and, and go like a bat out of hell. It just takes a slightly different flying style. You really need to get used to that power coupling, and I think you'll find it very enjoyable. In terms of its need for trim, it is important to have the trim set for takeoff. I use about a five millimeter nose up trim, which is about a single foam board width of trim nose up. I wanna see the trailing edge of the Elevon fully deflected up so the bottom surface of the Elevon is about five millimeters above the top surface of the wing. When I throw it, it ends up usually being about 60-70% power and it tends to track straight and true as it goes out as long as you have your rigging set correctly. 
I use maximum throws and uh, a little bit of expo. That way, if I want to stab at it and get a full throw roll, I absolutely can, and you've got remarkable roll performance. Simultaneously, if you just want to fly with light fingertip uh, movements, it's more than capable of very precise flying doing something like that. If uh, low rates and high rates is more something you crave, go ahead and do it. Uh, set the airplane up, but it, again, build one or two of these things, take them out, fly them line of sight with nothing but you know, an inexpensive receiver in it and a couple of servos and learn how the airframe behaves. I think you'll really find it a fun airplane. It is a quick and easy build. And for that reasons alone, I think it's something that you'll find in your kit and regular of using. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make a million of them. I'd love to see it. Um, show me your builds. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, really I find incredible. Um, if you're interested in producing these and turn around and selling them, contact me. You know, I don't mind you guys making these for personal use. I don't really have an intention to turn around and make kits, but if you've got a laser cutter or you've got the means of the facilities, come to me, let's talk about it, let's structure something, and I don't mind if you turn around and sell them. So, but otherwise, it's on the website now, usefulaircraft.com forward slash shop. It's the simple FPV pusher plank, and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Thanks for your time.